Joining me today is one of the true pioneers of the self-therapy industry, Sue Hitzman. She's been in the fitness industry since 1986. She started off as a fitness instructor, but then like many people, I think through her own experience with things like chronic pain, she got interested in therapy and body work. And that led her into a whole other direction uh, in addition to her fitness industry work. And it meant that she ended up combining really what is traditionally two quite separate disciplines into what we now know as the MELT method, which originally started off as providing home care or self-care for some of her clients, and then became this broad, expansive thing that we know today that incorporates apps, textbooks, videos, uh, on demand. Uh, there's a huge amount of resources that Sue has created. She has been on quite a number of television programs, probably the best known as Dr. Oz. So she has really permeated so many different areas of the industry. She's inspired an awful lot of people. I oftentimes, I say to people when I, I think of Sue, the word that pops into my head is energized. She's like energized, personified uh, in a very good way. Uh, so with that, I'd like to say, hi, Sue. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me, Aubrey. Thank you very much. I like that energized thing. That's nice. <laughs> I am energized. <laughs> But Sue, what we're really going to focus on, I suppose, in this talk is we are in challenging times. We accept that people have a lot of stresses. One of the great ways of dealing with stress, of course, is physical activity. Uh, the MELT method is really kind of perfectly placed, both in how it's being delivered, but also in terms of what people need at the moment. And what we really want to focus on in these kind of therapist together communications is talking to people like yourself around the world, how they're getting on, how they've been impacted, what they're doing positively about it, what they can maybe share with other people. Um, I know you're based in New York, and we hear a lot about New York in the news. Can you tell us a little bit about how you're getting on there at the moment? Yeah, I mean, New York City is super quiet right now, which I am perfectly happy with. I'm a super introvert, so uh, I spend most of my days working at home and doing things online anyway. So this has been kind of an easy transition for me. Um, but, you know, New York City is a very special place. I think New Yorkers are really taking this in stride. We're very respectful of one another. I mean, some people are crazy with their, you know, putting their hands up like that's going to stop the coronavirus from getting near them, even with the masks on. And so it's a little weird here. Um, but I'm lucky I live a, just a block away from Central Park, which has been my safe haven every single morning and evening. I go out either for a run or a blade or a bike ride or just a nice meditative walk. Um, and what's really incredible is because the frequency in New York is always very metal and very sharp and flat. And the tone is always very harsh because of all of the sound and the pollution. Uh, it's just been fantastic. I mean, Mother Nature, I think, is really loving this reset. The roots of the trees feel much deeper in tone to me. I'm a, I'm a tree hugger since I'm a kid. I, I like have this weird thing about vibration on things. So it's kind of like hugging a, there's like humans in there that just got reincarnated as trees or something, I think. But, um, you know, it's been, it's been really beautiful. The uh, like tulips last for two or three weeks. Usually tulips last for like three days and then they wilt. Uh, so it's been kind of unusual to hear birds. Uh, I can have my windows open <laughs> at night. Uh, so it's, it's, um, it's been interesting. I mean, it's just now starting to come back up a bit because uh, they're going to start opening up some of the stores, uh, selective stores. But I think the health clubs, the gyms and things like that still have quite a long way to go before those are going to open back up. But in, but in general, it's been nice and quiet in New York. And uh, we've had a lot of we've had a lot of Corona cases, but I don't know, I, I tested negative. So I don't even have the antibodies. So everybody can keep their cookies <laughs> away from me and I'll be fine. Moving on. <laughs> well, I can vouch for the fact that you are a hugger because we bumped into each other in November in Costa Rica, of yeah. all places. Uh, we were just finishing up a seminar with Eric and you were just starting yours and straight away, you straight in with a big hug. So I can vouch for that. You are a hugger. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about, I suppose, uh, the what I'm really curious about is to find out how you got on with the British Fascial Symposium that you were involved in. Uh, you were on the pain panel this year? I was. I was. It was actually incredible. You know, this is the third year that they've had the British Fascist Symposium. And uh, Jan Twerthal, I think is how you say her last name, she, she was the one who organized this. And I have to tell you, it was fantastic. Uh, I think everybody had uh, positive uh, comments over it. 
Um, it was it was really incredible. You know, we had a lot of speakers there. Julian Baker was there. Uh, yeah, Vanderwall was there. Robert Schleip, Till Luke, uh, Gil Hadley. I mean, it was just everybody was there. And um, I thought what was really fantastic. I think with this online concept of not having a conference is that you can go back and rewatch things until June. Um, it was very interactive. After you did your session, you could talk to people. And I chose to record my movement sessions. So I actually got to watch people in those little boxes on my screen doing it. And then I would type in messages to them, which you don't really get to do in real time when you're teaching. Wow. So it was quite a, a, a new, unique teaching tool. I got really excited over the opportunities of having that in, a, in an environment where you could talk to people. It was really, it was really fantastic. I mean, I, I think she just did a fantastic job with the entire uh, event. It was something, I think, to, for all of us to model after if we're going to do anything online. It was wonderful. Yeah, because I, I attended the British Fashion Symposium a few years back um, when Leon Chato was still with us and he was one of the keynote speakers. And Leon is just amazing to listen to. I always talk about his kind of professorial sort of manner. He was talking about the changes that we see in fashion, and the, the, the language that we need to develop, the nomenclature. And he was talking about, he said, you know, uh, the Steckos have coined this term densification. Is it a word? I don't know. <laughs> and it's his rolling delivery. You know, you've heard Leon talk. Uh, he was, he was actually... Him. He was one of my, my first uh, mentors in the industry in the early 90s. I had gotten into active isolated stretching, and that was the first time I ever put my hands on someone to do those techniques. And then I learned about Eric Dalton's work and Leon Chetow, and it was kind of like a toss-up. And I ended up going down to Florida uh, to meet Judy Delaney and uh, Leon at some events, and it blew my mind. I mean, I was in a master's for physiology and anatomy at the time. And I was just like, we're not covering any of this in my master's program. Like, what are y'all talking about? Like, where are you getting this information from? Because this is like not in my textbooks. I don't even know where you're getting this from. And that was really a turning point for me in understanding how the body is connected and to not be so honed in if somebody's got like a, a shoulder problem that there, there may be connections somewhere else and you can't just focus on the biomechanical behavior of a joint. You have to look at the connection through the body. And that I think was a, a big eye opener for me in my, in my uh, mid twenties. And that, that shifted me uh, as an exercise, uh, you know, fitness person who was teaching group exercise to really know that there was a lot more for me to learn. And so that, that was what sent me down the road of uh, manual therapy. Yeah, because we've talked about this before. You were saying about what initially got you uh, seeking treatment, this chronic pain kind of thing was a pain in your foot. And you were saying you got some craniosacral for it. Yeah, so that was actually, that was, that, was the, that was the perplexing thing for me was that I had gotten into neuromuscular therapy already. So I had three and a half, four years behind me with, with Leon's okay. work. And that was, you know, again, it was more about not only movement, but muscle activation, right? It was about, it was about putting somebody in the right angle at the right position and activating a muscle that could alter the brain's response, right? So when I, I was, I was uh, in my late twenties and I woke up one day and my foot hurt me. I thought I stepped on a piece of glass and I just, it, it really, I think that was a very depressing moment for me because at that point I really thought I had all the tools to transform anybody's body. And when it didn't work for me, it kind of disillusioned me. And uh, what, what I can tell you today is that it was, I can look back now and I wrote about this in my second book was, I think a lot of the pain that I had in my body was from emotional imbalance where my father was uh, my father had cancer and he hadn't gotten diagnosed. And I think somewhere my energy picked up that he was departing and it was like I was being uprooted. And so I did. I went to see a cranial sacral therapist. She worked on my nose. I had a somato emotional release. The next day, my foot didn't hurt me. And I was like, what kind of neuromuscular therapy is this? She's like, it's not neuromuscular therapy. <laughs> I was like, what muscle are you on? She's like, I wasn't on a muscle. So that it was right there also that 
you know, you, you get this idea of how muscles and, and biomechanics are, but when it comes to how our brain produces pain, how we sense and feel the world around us, how we feel interoception, proprioception, all these things, that there's just so much to learn about how the body interrelates with the everything else. Uh, and so it was that introduction of cranial work that got me into even the lighter touch therapies. And then that also made me look at Leon's work differently also that I, I hadn't really made that connection yet. And, and that was where the osteopathy part really started to click in for me. I understood that. And then it was visceral manipulation and lymphatic drainage. And, you know, you just, any therapist will probably tell you that every time you think you've learned something new, you realize how completely you know nothing and you've got a lot more work to do. <laughs> Absolutely. And I think it's, it's really interesting to see how our understanding has changed, uh, how we realize fascia plays so much more of a role, how neurology plays more of a role, and even where the two of those intersect, I think, is a lot of how those two nearly separate ideologies in bodywork are going to start to come together that we're going to see a lot of merging, I think, over the next probably decade. Because um, that's one of the things I want to ask you about as well. Uh, apart from the kind of things you've been working on, like the British Fascial Symposium, I want to talk to you a little bit about your new projects as well. But in terms of like looking forwards, where do you see things going? What kind of positives? What kind of things are you looking forward to? Oh, my gosh. I mean, to me, I think uh, I, I think that the industry, you're right, it is starting to understand more. You know, we've got the atomic force microscopy uh, and these these high powered micron microscopes. And so we're able to look at the extracellular matrix and you know, we can actually see the cells of fascia. And even at the last Fascia Research Congress, Carla Stecco uh, announced that they discovered a new cell in fascia that they called the fascia site that yeah. is a cell that's actually producing the hyaluronin, whereas fibroblasts are producing the collagen and the reticular and elastin fibers. And it was like, imagine that. You know, we're in, it, there, it was 2019, and we're, we're still discovering new cells in the human body, 2018, actually. You know, we're, we're still discovering new things. So I think that, you know, we see fascia as being a common thread to many component, many different types of healing modalities, but yeah. you always have to go back to the idea that the nervous system is really the most complex system, and it, it is the system uh, that has that sounds the alarm and gives us the pain response. Now there's research into glial cells and how the, the, the glia and the brain are different than the ones in the connective tissue and how they interrelate could also have pain relationships. So I think I'm excited to see where this research really comes, you know, down to, I think, understanding how, how to mitigate uh, chronic chronic pain problems because we couldn't before because we really didn't understand the behavior of those cells uh, and the thing for me that I kind of get excited about is when I when I started talking about fluid flow of fascia which is what melt was really all about as being such a critical component of connective tissue everybody was still you know it's all collagen 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 adaptation and I'm like it's the fluid perfusion that you've got to get moving and what's been beautiful for me is for the past 20 years, it's like the science is just continuing to catch up to a theory and validate the methodology more and more. And now what's really wonderful to me is a lot of these other practitioners who always talk about like smashing and grabbing, crimping and twisting, you know, you know, grinding and plowing. And they use those words when they're doing fascia techniques. And all of a sudden they're like, you know, we want to be more soft and gentle. We want, you know, I'm like, well, then change your language, you know, stop calling it crimping and plowing, you know, how about just gently gliding and shearing, you know, like, can we use better terms? So I, I, I feel like we're understanding that the body needs a softer touch to begin. We need to go in with a more gentle uh, awareness is really important. Sensory reception is very important to how we mitigate pain problems. So I think, um, I mean, I'm excited to see how we can use technology and the, um, you know, the, the ability for us to get information out faster uh, and hopefully get new funding and get more of the medical field uh, down on the language that we're all understanding of fashion and the nervous system. And I, I think we're, I think it's hopeful. I think we've got a lot of 
opportunities where maybe we can stop people from using opiates because those things will kill you. Don't, don't yeah. take opiates. Well, one of the things I wanted to ask you about as well, because I know the melt method is huge around the world. You actually teach classes in the UK, possibly not as well known here in Ireland. And I know that's a very local kind of thing. And I'm not going to put you on the spot and say, can you dis uh, distill the decades of what you've done into a little soundbite? I'm not going to do that to you. But I know a lot of people get this misconception that, you know, uh, the melt method is foam rolling or something daft. Yeah, can you show us your roller? Yes. Yeah, so, so this is the melt roller. So it's saw and it's made of a rubberized material. So it has a little bit more of a grip to it. It's got a little bit of texture to it. So that's unique. And we use like a di different types of balls. This is the primary ball that we use on the hands and feet, but we also have little balls and slightly firmer balls that have, you know, again, grip uh, that we use on the hands and feet. Um, but essentially melt is a neurofascial technique. We're using fascia as a vehicle to improve sensory motor control and sensory responsiveness, autonomic functionality. Uh, and we, we incorporate uh, myofascial types of techniques where we are addressing the connective tissue uh, with mindful meditation practice and breath work and- um, Okay, it brings uh, in a lot of different disciplines. Indeed, you know, like okay. to just try to bring them all together to educate people on how to self-regulate, how to improve self-regulation, because in this world, we are just, you know, stressed out. Our stress response sometimes just gets so haywire that our body's natural ability to rest and repair gets out of balance. And, and if your rest and repair to stress seesaw is always in a tip scale. It's just a matter of time. It just goes over and that wreaks havoc on your enteric or gut regulation, uh, your microbiomes, and, and also can create emotional shading. It can create depression, can create anxiety. So it's, it's important that people kind of learn uh, how to tap into their nervous system and their fascial system. So I get it. Everybody always sees the roller and they're like, oh, it's a foam <laughs> rolling technique. I'm like, we don't really roll very much. It's actually a much more intelligent um, practice that really simulates manual therapeutic intervention like cranial sacral therapy, neuromuscular, uh, active isolated kind of movements, uh, muscle activation techniques, things like that. So it, it has a, it's, there's a body savvy to it and melt incorporates its own language. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just, it's a way for me to get a lot of high level body work concepts out to the general public through layman's concepts and simplified terms. But I think as well, the fact that this is self-treatment so it's so topical right now, it's so well-placed, where people are still in degrees of lockdown or maybe even isolating, that they can do these things for themselves. Um, I had a client actually yesterday say uh, they'd had a flare up of their SI joint pain and they had shooting sciatic pain. And I actually did a short video and just WhatsApp to them of, these are some self-care movements I want you to do. And they literally contacted me this morning to go, that pain is gone. Like from acute pain to gone, so the amount that the client can do for themselves and what the MELT method it will empower them to do is phenomenal. What I really want to talk to you next about, though, is the different kind of ways that people can do that. Because you have a lot of different platforms aimed all the way from beginner, doesn't know anything about the MELT method, first introduction, all the way through into, I think you're working, you said, on instructor training even, but so much in between. And I was really excited about, you said, the self-care program that you've just launched. Can you... Tell us a bit. Sure. Yeah. So, so we we just launched on Monday this past week. So, you know, mid May, a self, an online self care course. It's a five module. Uh, there's like thirty some odd videos in it, and it walks you through step by step the Melt Method book in video format, so that people can really, you know, read the book and digest that, but not, you know, be looking at the book and trying to figure out the techniques, which is what people were doing. I didn't think that that was going to happen, uh, but it, it was it was my, you know, because of what's happening in this climate, I got concerned that you know a lot of people don't use apps or they're not. They're not that savvy, but they do have a computer or they do have a smartphone. So I decided, well, maybe I could create a really low cost course and get people into self-care in, in an inexpensive way at home. So we created this self-care online course. It's five modules. It's self-paced. There's printouts, there's videos, there's quizzes. Uh, and then you get a certificate at the end if you, you know, do, if you actually take the quizzes, which I think is nice, you know, it becomes part of the tribe. 
Uh, and it was just, you know, for 50 bucks a way to help me help the community around me get access to Melt uh, in a really simple way. So that's my, my new project that's out there. And I've been really lucky because I launched my online streaming platform about three years ago. So we have over 150 self-care treatments already there. And the beauty of my the app, I think, is kind of similar to what you were just saying, is for therapists, it's a great resource so that you can actually point your clients and say, listen, go to the app and watch the SI joint pain treatment watch these tutorials, you know, and, and then follow that plan. And so and you can literally just pick the kind of two or three things that are most relevant for that person. Exactly. And so that's what our instructors do. And a lot of our instructors are physical therapists and manual, manual therapists of some sort. Sorry. Uh, so, so that's kind of been a great resource for them. And then for the general public, the nice thing about the app is very similar to the, to the, uh, online course is that there is a getting started section, but now if you really want to instill a self-care practice, now we have uh, self-care treatments in three categories, pain, performance, lifestyle. So if you have shoulder pain, hip pain, knee pain, there's, there's self-care treatments that range anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes long, depending upon what the problem is. Uh, there's treatments for those of us who sit at a desk, like melt for the desk sentence, melt for sleeping booty, melt for tech neck. And then, and then we've, and then we've got, uh, for those of us who are athletic, uh, we've got prep maps that are about 10 minutes long. Like if you're going to go out for a run, you want to just treat your feet, uh, or just treat a, you know, a body part. And then there's recovery or restorative based training. And then in my second book, which is Melt Performance, there's also these neuromuscular therapy techniques where they can learn how to stabilize their shoulder girdle, their hip. Uh, and then on top of all of these things on the app, if you, there's also tutorials on each technique. So if you're not sure on a technique, you can just go and watch that one technique and then go back to the treatment and see if you can perform it better. So I, I've been kind of hell bent on saying, I think I can teach people how to do self care without ever having them come into my office. And I've had that belief since 2006. And, and so I've successfully done that for quite a bit of time at this point. Um, and it works. And I think for anybody who's looking to self care, self regulate, um, self connect, there's, you know, that takes practice. And so it's a discipline of self care. And that's what that's what I instill in my clients. And it's works very successfully, just like how you say you've got to give your clients homework, they cannot just rely on you. Because to be frank, that's disempowering. You know, if, if the only way their lover get better is to always come to you, what if you go on vacation or retire, they're screwed. So we want to make sure that we're always offering our clients the empowerment to take care of themselves. I think that's an important message. Yeah. for Because I was talking to Whitney Lowe recently, and uh, he's very big on developing online learning in a way that's engaging and useful for people. And we talked about how much work that puts on the, the creator to make it that engaging. And it's fantastic that you've so many platforms, you've put so much work into it. I think I was kind of justified in saying about you being an energizer. That, that is, you know, putting that much work into something, you got to have a lot of energy. Yes, and, and really dedicated. You know, I feel like I'm passionate and persistent. And I just know for myself, you know, I'm, I'm going to be 50 this year. And so I want to keep my body looking good and feeling good. And I know... Melt has helped me a thousand times over. Like even for me, you know, some days I'm sitting here, I'm like, God, my hip kind of feels not so great. Well, I don't sit there and whine about it. I, I just stop what I'm doing and I go and I melt and I'm like, wow, that feels instantaneously better. Thank God somebody invented this self-care technique. This is great. <laughs> you know, so I'm, you know, so I feel like I know for myself how much it's helped me. I've seen it help thousands of other people and uh, you know, we've got 2,000 instructors around the world in 28 countries, and they're successfully also sharing this. And in this corona time, we, we empowered our instructors. I said, we got to get you guys teaching classes to your community online. And actually, it's been incredible for them. They, they've saved their business. They are still engaged with their clients. They do weekly classes, uh, and, and they're wonderful at it. So you know, if, if any of the people listening are, you know, gosh, I'm going to lose my career, you have to be resilient, 
you have to realize that virtual reality, AI, and the internet is gonna become a big piece of your practice, but 100% for certainty, you'll never be not employed. There'll always be somebody injured. There's always gonna be somebody needing hands-on therapists. But in this time, it's really important for those of us who are hands-on practitioners. Remember, you get a lot of satisfaction uh, connecting with people. So make sure you're still reaching out and connecting with your clients, even if it is through the internet, because on a psychological level, it's important that you stay connected because I don't know if people really realize how important that is for the therapist so that when they come back to their people, they're grounded, they still feel positive, they, they're, they're not feeling feast or famine um, because you don't want that energy in your hands when you treat people. You, you want to stay positive 100% of the time if you can yeah. be present. And we'll uh, list links and things like that to your website is The Melt Method. And for people, it doesn't really matter what way you learn best. There are books, there are videos, there are apps. There's just so many ways you can access this. And I always say that there's no point in having like the best piece of exercise equipment in the world or the perfect diet sheet that sits in a drawer. The fact that this is going to engage you and get you working, people can really build their daily routines around it, improve their mental health, feel better, move better. As you said, counter the anti-aging thing is always popular for people. <laughs> yeah, and that's it is, you know, milk doesn't replace anything, right? It's it's yeah. just an add-on technique. So yeah, whatever you're doing, if you have athletics or you're doing fitness or you have a therapist, it's not replacing anything, but it's a nice way to get anybody at any age to engage in self-care. And melt, really, I would say anybody can melt. If you're a teenager or an older adult, uh, there's ways to modify everything. Um, and there's, there's just an opportunity for everyone to engage in self-care in a simple way. And, you know, again, the language is easy. Our instructor trainings, we're moving level one instructor trainings online, probably in the fall because of what's happening so that people can still learn the Excellent. information now and don't have to wait until 2021. Um, it's important that we're still gaining our education it, for anybody who's a practitioner. You know, you got to keep your mind happy. So if you're a therapist and you're not familiar with MELT, I would say check out the, the MELT programs and start doing it yourself. If you've been doing it for a while, it's great to know that there's going to be, um, there's actually instructor training coming online as well. So that's going to really open things up for people who have been maybe practicing the method themselves for a while and were thinking about going that direction. But I think that's one of the great things about technology. They might have said before, oh, I, I might not have the ability to travel because I have somebody I have to look after, or I might not have the finances to travel. This is going to really open things up for people in a new way. Absolutely. I think that's important, again, for anybody who is an educator, don't stop educating people because of this. Because here, you listen to me and listen to me good. This is not going to be the only virus. It's just one that really affected a whole pile of people at one time. But if this has happened once, we know we're going to see it again. It's just like the stock market crashing. It doesn't crash once. It's going to, it's a cycle. Life is a cycle. There's going to be positive and not positive. And it's, you know, there's nothing constant about life except death. So, um, you know, that which we resist persists. You just have to go with it. And it's important that you keep a positive outlook. Um, it's what will save you. That's absolutely true. Sue, I'm very conscious that you've been so generous with your time and I really appreciate it. I know you've got a ton of projects on like the rest of us, probably more so than most of us with all of your weekly updates that you do on Facebook and things like that. So if you want to check out some free videos, not only is there a free seven-day trial available um, for the on-demand, Melt On Demand, go to Sue's Facebook page, check out some of her videos. You can go back through her wall, her feed, uh, look at all the different things. She's on Instagram as well. There's so many resources. Sue, is there anything you'd like to say in closing? Just, you know, I mean, I hope everybody's doing okay and, you know, keeping, again, a positive outlook, drink water frequently, eat water-filled foods, stay healthy, keep moving. Check us out on Instagram, on at Melt Method, at Melt Method on Facebook. Aubrey's right, you know, I've got tons of um, uh, videos. I mean, I'm always doing tutorials or talking about the Melt Map of the Week or somebody wrote in to me asking a question. And so instead of just answering them, I answer it to everyone. So I'm, I'm always open to share more and check out meltmethod.com and come our way. That's great, Sue. Really appreciate it. We'll be posting this video on Facebook. We'll also put it on YouTube. So on YouTube particularly, we'll have um, links and things like that in the, the section below the video. So you can find your way if you have any difficulty finding what you shouldn't, 
I mean, it's so easy to find. It's so accessible. Sue's on so many mediums. There's no excuse. You really should get out there and start melting straight away. So once again, Sue, I'd like to say thank you very much for joining us. Really appreciate it. And I hope to catch up with you maybe in September if you're going to Oklahoma. Gosh, I hope so. I mean, I can't wait to see you. And maybe we need to like do something out in Ireland to give me a really lame excuse to come and hang out with you in Ireland. I'm ready. Sue, you're always welcome. We'll get in touch. We'll organize something and we'll let people know when we've got something put together. So once again, thanks a million for joining us, Sue. And we'll talk to you again soon. <laughs>